The month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And because I deal with mental illness, I definitely want to react to videos informing us, educating us, and also spreading awareness because so many people deal with this. So stay tuned. I am going to be reacting to videos by this channel called Psych2Go. If you haven't already, please go to that channel and subscribe to it. They're short videos. I know everyone's attention span is extremely short, so this is good for you. And it's also animated, so it's not boring. So if you're dealing with any type of mental illness or if you know someone who is, this is good for you to watch. So I'm actually gonna react to a video called Nine Signs You Have Unhealed Trauma. Many of us go through trauma. Let's go ahead and watch this video. I have not seen it, so I wanna see if I can relate, and if I do, I'm gonna share my experiences as well. By the way, before I begin, please comment below and let me know your experience, what type of mental illness that you have, or anybody that you love that's going through it, because I love to read those type of things. You never know who's gonna come across your comment and what you say may help other people so help me share the awareness of mental health y'all ready to watch this video let's get to it hey there psych2go fans we're back to help you understand everyday psychology better trauma is often the result of an overwhelming amount of stress from a situation that exceeds one's ability to cope such as the death of a loved one the end of a meaningful relationship or the rejection of a loved one do you pretend that everything's good when it really isn't. When you don't have a positive and healthy way of dealing with your trauma, you end up repressing your negative emotions. It can be hard. And what a lot of people do, they hold so much in until one day they just explode. Then you have others who try to numb themselves through self-medication, whether that's drugs, whether that's alcohol. Not dealing with your trauma in a healthy way can create more problems for you recognize unresolved trauma on the surface, especially within ourselves. So, here are nine signs you're still suffering from unhealed trauma. All right, let's hear. One, you resist positive change. When something good comes into your life, is your first instinct to be suspicious of it? You have an innate feeling of shame or guilt whenever you allow yourself to grow attached to someone or celebrate your own success? Yes. If so, you might be carrying unresolved trauma within you. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I try not to get too close to people because of a lot of traumas that I've had. I have felt very neglected throughout my life with the people that I loved so much that I kept so close to my heart, whether that was due to death, friendships that ended abruptly, unexpectedly. So anytime someone does come to my life that could actually be a positive change, of course I'm suspicious. Of course I want to know what their inten intentions are. I don't want them to get too close because I feel like I might be bad luck and I don't want anything bad to happen to them, but I also don't want to deal with what can happen to me the outcome with the outcome of that friendship or so on and so forth. You have a hard time accepting positive change and may even try to resist it at first because <laughs> deep down inside, you feel like you don't deserve to be happy. Two. You need to plan for everything. Yeah. Mm. Do you have a need to stay completely in control? Mm. Do you feel frustrated and lost whenever things don't go the way you expect? Mm. Your need for control is most likely rooted in a traumatic experience that left you feeling helpless and vulnerable. As a result, you micromanage everything and worry about the things that are out of your control. Uh. This shows that you have a deep-seated distrust in both yourself and the world in general. Yeah, I can see that. I have trust issues, not necessarily with my partners. For some reason, I trust my partners right away, just with others outside of that box. Three, you have a strong fear of failure. Being afraid of failure is a normal part of human nature. However, a strong fear of failure can be unhealthy if it starts to outweigh your motivation to succeed. Not only do you miss out on a lot of opportunities and stifle your creativity and ambition because of it, but it can also lead to perfectionism and insecurity. Uh. It might be instilled in you by unresolved trauma that causes you to have a negative belief in yourself and internalize your shortcomings. I'm actually the opposite of that. Are any of you afraid? I know some of you may be afraid of failure, but are some of you afraid of success? I am. I am. That's why my goal on this YouTube channel is only 100,000 subs. I'm okay with it. I don't need a million. 
I'm just afraid of disappointing. I just don't want too much expectations out of me because then I'm afraid to disappoint. Four, you have a strong fear of success. Oh, there you go. Alternately, <laughs> repress. There you go, goddamn. Yeah, I, I know I have unhealed trauma, but why do I have all these signs? <laughs> I can also manifest through a strong fear of success. All right. Did you ever hold yourself back from getting something you wanted? Not because you feared you might not get it, but because you feared what would happen when you did. Yeah. You're afraid of losing what you'll have even before you achieve it. The tendency to unconsciously sabotage your own chances of success is often associated with those who were abandoned or lost a loved one at a young age. Damn, really? How does that, how does, how do the two relate though? Well, I lost my cousin who was a brother to me, which I have his name tatted right here when he was 18 and I was 19 at the time. He was gunned down. And then I lost my best friend three years ago. She was my best friend of 19 years. She was only 32 years old when she passed. So abandonment and neglect is relating to fear of success. Interesting. Five, you have difficulty concentrating. Trauma has a lot of damaging psychological effects, and it's not uncommon for victims to suddenly have difficulty concentrating. Mm. If you've been having gaps in your memory, blacking out often, and finding it hard to keep your train of thought, it might be your mind crying out to you for help, asking you to work through your trauma. Damn, are you serious? <laughs> My memory has been really bad. I would say the last 10 years, it's always been bad. But my mom has bad memory. Like she sometimes forgets how old she is. And she's young, she's only like 64. And she's been having that, that bad memory since like in her 40s or so. So I thought it was genetic. So it could, be, it could be unhealed trauma. I know stress also plays a part. And I also have anxiety. So I know with anxiety, I'm all, my mind is constantly running. So I just feel like it's tired maybe. I don't know. Six. You have trouble asking for help. Do you have trouble opening up to others about what happened to you? If you've experienced some form of abuse or mistreatment, you usually struggle with asking for help. You'd rather suffer in silence because you're too afraid to reach out to someone else. You don't want to be rejected, denied, judged, or seen as weak by those around you. Seven, you often hurt yourself or others. Do you lash out at other people when you're experiencing intense emotions? Yes. You push your loved ones away and isolate yourself whenever you have to deal with a problem. Yes. If you're still hurting from unhealed trauma, there are times when you might end up taking it out on yourself or those you care about. I have a tendency to take it out on the people I love and care about. A good 12 years ago, I had a problem with alcohol abuse. On my 22nd birthday, I was gonna take my life. I cried myself to sleep and then the next day I seeked help. And this was three years of depression, trying to ignore and avoid the mourning process of my cousin. So I drowned myself in alcohol. And because I was emotionally unstable and not dealing with the trauma and the hurt and the pain, every time I got drunk, I would take it out on everyone, everyone around me. Any party I went to, I ruined. Any night out at a club, I ruined. Any family event, I ruined. But I'm not gonna lie to you, during, while it was happening, it felt good. It felt good because I was letting it all out and I can care less how you think or how you feel. Because right now it's my time. Right now it's my time to let that shit out. Take it, take it. That's what I would think while I was drunk. Then the next day I would feel like shit. I would feel bad, I would feel sorry for what happened, for what I did, for what I would say. 12 years later, I've gotten 10 times better, 10 times better. I still, make my, I still make my mistakes though, and I'm still working on it. You become emotionally volatile, out of control, and overly sensitive. You lose your temper, break things, and may even resort to self-harm. Eight, you struggle with low self-esteem. There are a lot of ways trauma can skew your self-image, especially if it's rooted in your early childhood experiences. Abuse, Abandonment and neglect can all lead you to question your own self-worth. You struggle to feel good about yourself if the abuse was inflicted upon you by someone you loved. Studies have shown that patients with PTSD often suffer from low self-esteem and feelings of worthlessness. And nine, you have unexplained psychological symptoms. Do you feel more anxious and panicky than before? Do you find it hard to feel happy or find pleasure from the things you used to enjoy? Have you lost your appetite or have trouble sleeping well at night? 
According to research, anxiety, depression, disassociation, depersonalization, panic attacks, frequent flashbacks, nightmares, and emotional distress are all common in patients with PTSD. Mm. Have you or someone you love ever experienced a traumatic situation? It's so weird for me to hear that because I never considered anything that I was going through as PTSD. I knew I had trauma, but I didn't realize how badly it affected me later in life. And I, I definitely have PTSD with death, friendships, and my molestation. If so, how do you plan to overcome it? If you're still suffering from any lingering psychological trauma, it's important that you reach out to a mental health care professional today and get the help you need to get better. Definitely. Healing from trauma takes time and effort, but it's worth it. And it's necessary in order to truly move forward in life and find some peace of mind. Please do share this with those you think might benefit from it. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Thank you for informing us. Please share my video as well because my experiences can help others and that this is my goal with this channel of mine. My advice for those who are suffering with PTSD and trauma, please seek help, please vent, please let it all out, please go to someone and talk to them with what you're going through and how you're feeling. You don't have to be alone and suffer alone. If you don't have anyone to turn to, a therapist, a psychologist, a counselor, they can help you professionally and they can give you the tools that you need to go through life in a healthy way. And if you or anyone you know are having suicidal thoughts, please call the suicide hotline. I will leave it in the description below. It is not your time to go. It is not your time to go. You are here for a reason. So know your purpose, know your worth. All right, you guys, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and please hit the bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace.